That's okay. Call this meeting to order. So, anybody, please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Agenda. We need to ratify the capital plan approval, and we need to speak with the planning commission. Okay. Is there anything else? Um, is this on new? Yeah. <coughs> Not yet. Oh. I'm just adding. No, I, I have something for new for new business. Um, we have. Um, I'd like to see if you guys can add to your agenda for tonight. It's the right time to bring it up. Yeah. I'd, li I'd like you to add the nomination of Russ Rosinski to the Planning Commission. Uh, you know, I'd like your recommendation for that Does he um, come in? as a new member. Could he come in and meet with us? Uh, I'm sure he can. Um, yeah, we'd kind of like to meet them first. Okay. Thank you. I'll, I'll communicate that with him. Thank right. you. Okay, is there anything else that needs to be added? Okay. No remarks except I'm ready for spring. Um, open public comment for items not on the agenda. Please limit to three minutes. I don't see any. Should I do what Tim told me to do here? Where's that? And then I'm not running. No. Now, so I can come. Um, all right. Town admin report. Okay. Uh, the annual report's gone to the printer, should be delivered uh, before February 22nd. I have a meeting tomorrow afternoon with Town Web to view the new redesign of the Town Website. So that'll be interesting. It's um, reconfiguration and a few more options cool. added. Uh, town Clerk will be traveling to Montpelier on uh, the 15th to run Legislative Day for the Town Clerk's Association. And uh, our Town Clerk is also the co-chair of the Legislative Committee. And, um, we have a lot of connections there. And the last of the backordered items for the kitchen um, rehab will be arriving next week. Excellent. And I'll be very excited to see this project begin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the town hall is uh, scheduled in the first round of energy audits um, for April 30th for them to do the, the level two assessment of town hall Excellent. to enable us to qualify for that, that big grant. So that's all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you. Minute approval. We have the work session on June 23rd and the regular meeting with notes. Do we have a motion? Madam Chair, I move that we approve the select board work session meeting and the regular meeting uh, minutes from Tuesday, January 23rd. Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, Michael? Aye. Brandon? Aye. Tom? Aye. Gina? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Warren? Madam Chair, I move that we approve payment of the following warrant, 15T accounts payable, $134,711.98, 3S payroll, $11,672.57, 4S payroll, $10,142.55, and 5S payroll, $9,600.25. Second. Is moved and second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, Michael? Aye. Brandon? Aye. Tom? Aye. Gene? Aye. Motion carries. New business. Mr. Allen? Yes, <coughs> Hi. Um, my name is David Allen with Casella Waste Management. We currently provide your municipal waste and recycling collection services. You all know you went, uh, put the services out to bid a few months ago and uh, we responded uh, with a bid that was not framed the way I think you were hoping for based on the structure of the bid. 
And um, I've spoken to Shelly, just wanted to make myself available for any questions you might have. But what we don't want to happen is the end of the existing agreement to come without us having a plan on how to move forward. We certainly don't want to leave the town stranded in any way. I think the best way for us to do that is to talk about what your plans are going forward. Shelly and I did speak last week. Mm -hmm. um, I had unexpectedly had to fly to California to drive my son back home. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have time for that story tonight. Uh, but as I was driving back, we talked about how do we is there a way that we can extend the existing agreement to buy us all more time to see if there are other options other than uh, what we're doing right now? I will express that we are not able to continue to provide services the way we do now, not just for Vernon, but for any community. Um, I brought up my son, so you're going to have to hear the story about my son, the volunteer firefighter, who says, Dad, the firefighters, you know, the, the men and women that run into burning buildings for a living, they figured out about 20 years ago that it's just too dangerous to hang a body off the back of a truck. But Dad, you still do it every day. Right. And he's absolutely right. And we as an industry, nationwide and as a company regionally, have made a commitment a safety commitment to our employees and the communities that we serve that we just can't do it that way anymore. So we are we are changing the way we collect waste and recycling. It has a huge impact on, on us and our customers like you. And so our proposal reflected that method of collection. Um, parts of Vermont it's very common, other parts of Vermont it's not. And and uh, so that's my, my overview. I'm happy to answer any questions I can I can answer. Michael? Uh, thank you for that, though. I didn't even never thought about the person on the back of the truck until you brought that up. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. huge. It is. Um, my question is, you guys are in the state of Vermont. What can you offer that is legal? <clears throat> yes, that's a great question. I think maybe there's some confusion on what is and <clears throat> isn't legal. Um, so the state of Vermont, as it does in several towns, I'll use Proctor as an example, Fairfax as another example, where the state does allow the town to fund a base level of service, if you will, through the general fund. And then whatever is determined to be above that fund with some kind of user fee. Uh, and again, the, I'm sure there are other towns, the ones I'm very familiar with are, or most familiar with are Proctor and Fairfax. So what we would suggest is for trash, that side of the service, is to offer that, um, that base level of service, anything outside of the cart, and then you know, really whatever your pleasure is, there are options for what do I do with a bag that's, that doesn't fit in that cart. Um, well, one, you could tell us don't pick it up, and there are many towns that say don't pick it up. It's usually uh, a challenge the first couple of weeks till people get used to that. Um, another is, if it is outside that bag, it has to be in some, outside of the, the cart, forgive me, it has to be in a pay-by-bag bag, not unlike what you use today. The challenge with that for me, that second option, is we're trying to, I say automated collection, I'm not suggesting a robot is going down your street, it's really mechanized collection, right? Well, I keep it safe. Yeah, it's got a one-armed band that's going out there and grabbing that cart. Why can't you purchase a truck, and I know it's capital, I understand sure. it's an expense to the company, but they have the vehicles where they load in the front, mm -hmm. and you have one driver, the driver gets out, it's a pain in the neck, it's a long day, um, puts the puts the barrels or the bags on that, and then it goes up this way, as opposed to the uh, the containers. Sure. And the other question I had is, who buys the containers? Sure. Both great questions. The the first question that's called a Carada style well, truck for what it's worth. Yeah. Right. So um, we do offer that service, but the, the, every time our employee steps out of that truck and grabs a bag of trash, the risk for industry in, injury is greater. We're we're just not. Yeah, it, it's we're a not, worker's comp nightmare, I understand it, that. It, yeah, and beyond the cost, we, we were committed to not hurting people right. for a living. So while that style of truck is available, 
uh, we still offer it with a cart where, uh, and I, I, I've, I've experienced with both. In a town like Vernon, that truck might work great. In some towns um, where they're uh, smaller, uh, a lot of dirt roads, smaller roads, that's a very long, you, you've obviously yeah. seen them. That's a big beast. So we use both those style trucks. Um, so that's a, the answer to your first question. Every community chooses, um, so what we proposed was everybody gets two carts, one for trash, one for recycling. Every community decides to manage that differently, who owns the cart. Some communities, you can buy carts cheaper than I can. You, know, I, you don't pay taxes, you don't have to make a profit, I have to do both. But someone's got to manage that cart. And when the cart breaks, because stuff happens and lids go wrong, and somehow when people leave, move home, some people take the carts with them. Um, most towns ask us to own those carts and manage it when they when something has to get replaced, when a plow takes one out. Yeah. It's, so either option is available. Um, what we proposed to you was uh, a, an option, which is us owning the carts. Uh, but again, a discussion and an option if the town wanted to own the carts, it's certainly certainly an option that some communities take. Um, roughly, if you want to know the price of a plastic cart, you kind of look at the gas pumps. It's a petroleum product, so that cost goes up and down with that. But roughly, a cart gets delivered to your home. And the way this would work is... Uh, the price of that card is delivered to the household, right? We would get the master list and you would confirm all the qualified households. Somewhere between 60 and 75 bucks per card. Um, whatever's going on in the labor market uh, increases and decreases that and whatever's going on with plastic prices increases. Are they 68 and 42 gallon? What we propose, there, there, there are two sizes we recommend, either 64 or 96s. Okay. They do make smaller ones, but I'd ask you to imagine being a driver trying to take that small little 32-gallon can and have it stand up straight when he's done. Yeah. We do our best, but it's difficult. Yeah. It is. And uh, we, we encourage towns to get away from that. <coughs> we don't, we're, we're in the service business. We don't want to leave a mess behind. Yeah. Many towns, and again, we, we want to make any of these options available to you, Many towns will offer a 96-gallon cart for recycling, a 64-gallon cart for trash. I know in my house, and with, I still have one more teenager there, uh, recycling stops when the bin is full. The bigger the bin, the more that gets recycled in your house. It's just the way we are. Some communities offer um, a 64-gallon trash every week and a 96 recycle every other week. Some just the opposite, the 64 gallon recycle every week uh, and a 96 trash every other. All of those scenarios I would love to talk to you about. What we put, did that answer yes. those two questions? Thank you. Um, and as, as we've learned as an industry, we've had all these same questions that you have. I've been doing this my entire adult life, but this is somewhat new to us in the last decade as well. Um, what we propose to you is somewhat unique. Um, there are split body trucks, split body automatic side, automated side loaders that have just what you would imagine, a split. And when it grabs that cart, the driver hits a switch and it goes into the recycling side or into the trash side. Vernon is, we think, ideal for a split body truck allowing to us to come to your house once, both materials, and move on. What's challenging to be sure about that is right now we think we get roughly 80-ish percent of your households participate in the recycling program, which is outstanding. But we think only about 25% of your residents participate in your pay-by-bag program. So we're not 100% sure what we'd see for volume at the curb. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think there's risk on everyone's side for that. I'm sure with your pay-by-bag program, um, 
the, you know, the, we're taking the risk because if all of a sudden another 20% of your town decided to participate, oh, I got to figure out how to pick that up for the same price. These are half million dollar trucks. So we would not be, that's why we didn't offer any of the tiers mm -hmm. that you um, asked for, you know, at 75% or 50%. I can't offer that service unless I go to an individual homeowner and say, hey, I'm going to charge you 50 bucks a month to pick up your trash and recycling. The economies of scale that we deliver when we do the whole town really depend on knowing are we getting everybody or not. So uh, you didn't ask that question, but I wanted to offer that. Um, I know it's often something we challenge, we struggle with when we are responding to, to bids like yours. So when you say an option is that you would own the bins, but we would still have to buy them? No. No. <clears throat> no. There is so, not that cost. Correct. So the proposal we gave you includes the cost of us providing those bins. Okay. That yes, wasn't clear I'm, correct. in the proposal. Thank yeah. You. That includes us providing two bins to each household. Okay. But again, that can be managed many different ways. It would have a, an effect on the price, right? If you wanted to go, you know, a 96 and a, and a 64. Um, yeah, but yes, that proposal included us providing two carts to your house, each home, assuming, I think we made the assumption of 925 households. And we simply took that from um, the state's, uh, the last census data. Um, again, with the split body, the assumption is we would be able to do that in just, just more than a day. We might, we would ask um, to, ex to be able to manage the routes a little bit and maybe actually extend it a day only because we really don't know what we're going to see for trash. But we think we know, um, but we'd rather hedge our bets and know we're going to provide good, reliable service. So. Um, it did assume the ability to talk about, hey, can we take part of the town and do it on, you know, we currently service you Wednesday, right? Thursday. Tuesday, I'm sorry. Thursday. Could we move? Thursday. 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 I'll Thursday. get it right. I apologize. We might ask, as we know more, it wouldn't have an effect on the price, can we carve out a chunk of the town and do it Wednesday or Friday just because we want to do this with one truck if we can. If we have to buy two Half million dollar trucks. I mean, I think that math we all get. Yeah. Do the carts come barcoded by address, so they're they're tagged to a specific address, so that if somebody moves or somebody has theirs out overnight and somebody needs one all of a sudden, <laughs> um, that you're able to. You know, when you do the barcode, when it goes up, there's an electric eye on the truck that gets the barcode on, on that? Almost. So the, they come typically barcoded, and they also have RFID tags yep. embedded in them so that we can record, um, if I live at 123 Elm Street, you can record that cart number ABCD went to 123 Elm Street. You can also tell if they're dumping <coughs> something they shouldn't be. It, it, the challenge is that... The, the technology to be able to then track how many times I lift your card at your address is, is not 100% there yet. Um, there used to be something in Vermont, uh, something called Recycle Bank. Anybody ever? There used to be a program out there where we, the, the industry tried to do that, and if you recycled a certain amount, you'd get a gift card to whatever. Yeah. It was a great idea, but that, again, that technology isn't, you know, we drive around New England bumpy roads and that kind of technology is still a little bit too sensitive to tolerate yeah. that. So, yes, I'd be able to demonstrate that I do deliver this cart to your house, but so far that's about all we can track. Okay, thank you. That's a great question. Sandra, do you have any questions? Is that Wendy Harrison. Wendy. Wendy, Wendy, and Sandra. Yeah, sorry, turned. Yeah, oh, the camera's turned. I'm running. Okay. Um, does anybody from the audience have questions for her? Thank you very much. Thanks for having so me. I, I, I do have another question. So, 
I just can't wrap my head around how this actually gets paid for in terms of, like right now, we're trying to have each household pay for what trash they produce. So how does this work going forward? Is the town supposed to just pay for it all via taxes? Or how do you figure out what each household is producing in trash? So this needs to be built um, per state statute, either pay as you throw, by volume, or by unit. And a lot of towns are doing by unit, which is per kitchen, which is a residence. And you bill it directly on their property tax. As, uh, uh, yeah, as if they're interested in, in, you know, participating, and it would be, you know, segmented. You know, whatever. That would be like a district, a water district charge Correct. on your tax bill. It would be a waste district charge, if you will. Not the wind regional district, but right. But it would be a local surcharge on the tax bill. Yeah, I spoke to so we did, yeah. town clerk yeah. in um, Fairfax, and they said it's about three hundred and sixty dollars a year. That's cheap. The service. That's actually very cheap. I have a question. Yeah. Okay, Jesse. So if that's the case, where it's built into our taxes per household. How is that any different from when the state changed it so we couldn't just have the triple T picking up the trash every week like they were before? <laughs> like, that makes no sense. Evenly out of everyone's taxes, not personally. That's how, that's how it was before. I know, we, but now, we now, you're, out per now you're personally, your taxes, if you, if you decide you're going you to do it, right. your taxes you have will have it. If I'm not doing it, it won't be on my taxes. Right, but if everybody collectively did it again, you know, well, everybody per right. household would have to figure out okay i've got a dumpster but do i really need my dumpster yeah. no i have the dumpster because i don't have two barrels getting picked up every week so it's that's well it is different because instead of coming and buying bags you're going to just pay the town no i'm just saying how is it different from when they changed that's it how before? It's, that's how it's different though <clears throat> because each individual house is going to be basically paying the town for the service but not just if like, we do it per kitchen there is a difference it is incentivized to recycle because they give a larger container whereas before you only had a small container so that's before how, we didn't have any containers well that's how yeah. that's how you can get around it and that's why it's different if, if i may i think that's where the state comes at a, a minimum level of service so that can be funded the way you described and then if if i were to use more let's say i had extra 10 bags that that would have to be funded a different way. And and how do you do that? Well, you could keep the pay by bag program going for the extra bags, or you could say, hey, you gotta go to the you gotta go to the transfer station, pay yourself. I think that's how the state Right, I get what Mike was saying about, you know, if, if I keep my dumpster, well then that just means that the people per household have to pay for it. I get that portion. I just trying to figure out how it doesn't make sense, but it used Thank to be you. okay it used to be, it's Vermont at its finest. Yeah. It used to be we all paid it. This one right, is every year. We pay the bill, and, yeah. and now you now only the people that would want to use it would come out of their taxes. Mm -hmm. And the only reason the people weren't using them the other way was because they were forced into having to do the pages you throw bags, or they get in your own dumpster or your own service. Mm -hmm. If I may, and that's our challenge. I wouldn't be able to. Oh, I'm just bare, no, you're fine. Uh, Seven hundred homes participated this year. Your bill is only this month or next year. Uh, my business doesn't work that way. I'm, I would be scaled at, to provide service to the whole town, regardless of who participated, assuming everyone did. Well, that's how you'd have to assess. The town would have to make that assessment on a surcharge or a, a separate charge on the tax bill as a, as a user charge, uh, universal. Yeah, that, that I just want to... Uh, that's no, over your, my head. Your I bid's $500,000 a year. We have 300 people taking advantage of it. We got to figure out 500,000 right. by 300 gotcha. people by yes. 52 weeks. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure I heard you correctly. You said only 25% of the residents right now are using the phase of growth. It's a guesstimate, um, but w about the the we rely on the drivers and compare it to how much it takes to pick up the recycling and between 25 percent and a third the the other 70 60 to 70 percent are hiring a private hauler to come pick up their trash it's probably even harder for you guys because most people that use the pay as you throw program might do one bag a week 
and that's why they use the program that's important for them. If, and, yeah. and if you look at what we currently charge you, we charge you significantly less for your trash collection uh, than we do for your recycling. Because mm -hmm. because we know, at least we're gambling, um, that things will stay the same and you know most people won't participate in the bag and tag program. If everyone suddenly participated, we'd be in hot water. Um, um, what was it? I forgot. I forgot. It'll come back to me though. Um, wow. There's a question in the back. About the bags. Hi. In, in Florida, my parents live there, and my whole family does except me. <coughs> they get two and now three because now they got three different ways of separating their trash. Um, of these big, big barrels, they're big, and their tops flip up, and the guy comes with a thing like this, picks them up, and it goes, and down it goes. And um, it seems to work well there, because we even used a bed and breakfast thing that you rent through, my daughter rented it through one of these programs, and one of the things was we had to use the right trash things. And... Um, is that what you're talking about? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. That worked very well there. Yeah. And if it's three hundred dollars or three fifty a year, that's a lot cheaper than having a ugly thing sitting in your yard stinking up. Because <laughs> those are at least fifty dollars. Okay, so you remember? I'm not very objective, but I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> Is gone. Gotcha. I, I have a question. Would you like to give, we're in the service business, we want to provide whatever level of service you want as a town. Would you like to give me some guidance on, hey Casella, go back to the drawing board and here are some ideas we'd like to look at. I, I can certainly rough draft maybe with you some options, but if you see, if there's something you'd like to see, We'll certainly do our best to do that. Okay. I think we need to bring back our trash committee and have them survey the town. Mm -hmm. Well, what are we going to do July 1? Because it, it's, it's getting on it, almost the middle of February. <coughs> yeah, right after the annual. Sounds like some people are throwing trash in their trunk and going down to Casella's to drop it off. <laughs> I'm tell, I have to go down the Cape every week now, just stop and, board and drop it off at the landfill. Well, it'll be up to the voters if they choose to go for the four month extension that's on the morning. So we'll, we'll communicate with you through Shelly. Okay? Super. I just wanted to make sure you knew that we're, boy, we're open to whatever you'd like us well, to work the, on. Now, knowing that you're providing the barrels makes a big difference sure um yeah that makes a big i, I had visions of us having to go out and buy the mm -hmm. containers mm -hmm. and then, mm -hmm. again there are reasons you, there are grants available that offset it slightly there again you don't i i have to make a profit and i pay taxes but right. so dollar for dollar you can do it cheaper but it's also a lot of work to manage so yeah, a, um okay. yeah well, thank you for having me, and you know, if you have questions, I'm yeah. certainly available. Thank you. $200. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to thank you. Wendy. Wendy's going to, uh, Senator Wendy Harrison is going to give us an update on the contaminated soils bill that she's working on. Hi, Wendy. Hi. Hi, Madam Chair, members of the board. Great to see you guys. Um, Thank you for having me, um, and thank you for calling me when the situation came up. Um, I won't go into the, uh, I'll just, just for the public, um, there was an issue in the fall, um, possibly in the summer, but I heard about it in the fall, where there were what's called development soils, so they're lightly contaminated soils, were proposed to be disposed of in an unlined pit. And um, when I heard about that, I 
called the Department of Environmental Conservation. And what they were doing was um, a relatively new process, but it's one that has never been used. And the intention was not to put uh, contaminated, however lightly contaminated soil into um, an unlined pit, particularly since there are potable water wells. So I, I really appreciate you um, letting us know. So in response to that, I worked with the staff and um, am proposing a bill that would put a moratorium on that process. And the DEC folks need to come up with a better system and uh, better rules. And when those rules are accepted, if they are accepted, then they can go back to using that process. And the bill has been taken up by the Natural Resources Committee, which is great because they don't take everything up that they can or that we give them. And um, so it would be helpful to have someone testify from the town and testifying. Um, it is, it's not like a court, but um, what it is, is the committees want to hear from the people who actually know what happened on the ground. And so um, they would like to hear from a couple of folks from Vernon and about the situation and, and what happened you can do it by Zoom. It would probably be the week after next that that they would uh, schedule something because they're working on a big Act 250 bill. Um, so if you are able to do that, that would be great. And Shelly has all of the contact information. And it's just great to see you all. Nice you to too. see you too, Thank Senator. You. Thank you very much. Any Thank questions, you. Michael? Come back. Ready? No. Tom? No. All set. Thanks, Wendy. Okay, you're welcome. Take care. You too. Great. Girl Bye. Scouts. Permission to sell cookies on March 5th. Absolutely. Um, just need a motion. I uh, move that we allow Girl Scout Troop 4907 to sell Girl Scout cookies during voting on March 5th in the town hall. Is there a second? Second. second. Is there any discussion? There better be shortbread cookies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we haven't heard from the historians either. All those in favor, Michael, Aye. Brandon, Aye. Tom, Aye. Jean. Aye. Even if there's not shortbread. Even if there's, there's not shortbread. Okay, capital plan projections. Okay. Oh, All right. the historians. Oh. Well, we worked on the final draft and got that out um but then today in looking at um the i was looking at the town report and what got published and things and what i saw was that there are some discrepancies uh so what is published in the town report is not the final draft that i sent there are some changes were made mm -hmm. um i was not notified of those changes i was told there was a couple typo zeros that were missing, which I did find, um, but some numbers were actually changed. The other thing that I saw was that the capital fund status, which I did submit, but my copy was not used. Um, the one that was submitted had some inaccuracies and the balances are not correct. And I had communicated last week with my final stuff that I had found that some balances we're not care, it turns out when I went back and looked at previous years, balances had not been carried over properly and credited with the proper appropriations. So I actually created a document to show here's what the balance was noted, here's what the appropriation was noted, here's what the new balance was based on the information in town reports and previous documentation. Um, I actually found that because I was working on the fire department roof stuff and I worked with Kathy and she looked back historically to see if we had put a roof on and how much it costs and if we made repairs so that I could sort of make a projected idea of how much a new roof would be to put in the plan. And that's where I noticed, wait a minute, um, so the roof is one example. So then I just went through every single expenditure and I actually found 10 or 15 that the balances were not 
carried accurately and I know that we had no real capital plan committee for you know some years so um, I only went back four years so it's possible that some of the balance errors were prior to that I only went back four years um, but I can tell you that the fire department roof the one example that I found that got me down that rabbit hole in 2021 the balance was 25,304 in 21-22, it was reported in the town report as 29,560 and 19,560. The information that I had for 2023, the balance was 23,780. There is no expenditures that Kathy found in her history of searching for the fire and, and Shelly, because um, Cindy was on vacation, so Kathy and Shelly worked on that, showing that any expenditures were made for the roof. There was also no information to show that there was some surplus of money added other than the appropriations. I found that to be the case with, um, there were, let's see how many expenditures, I didn't actually add them up, probably 10 or 15 expenditures that had similar history and no information provided to me that any expenditures or influx of money, because some of the balances were either lower than what they should have been or suddenly higher. Um, the town ban's another one that like the final balance is higher than what it actually should be based on the tax appropriations um, and there's no indication that there's been you know anyone at any point said we needed to add more money to things or that money was used for those expenditures there were 13 so out of what's in the capital plan there were 13 that the balances were not correct as they carried over year to year. And that was only looking back four years. Now, did you take this up with Cindy? I did, I didn't receive a response. So okay. that was part of the email that I sent uh, with all my final stuff, including the worksheet that I did to show the balances, like here's what it said, here's what the appropriation said. So then I, at the end, said here's what the correct balance should be based on you know, what we've added to it, or supposed to have added to it, or spent. Um, I can tell you that I continue to not get communication from Cindy, regardless of how I ask questions. I always ask her before I put anything in the capital plan. I have all along. And all I get is word from other people about the things that are being said about me. I have not gotten direct communication from her either to answer my questions or to, I mean, I've sent her stuff and said, hey, can you just check this? I've said to her, my balances don't match the information you gave me. Can you help me figure out where my numbers are wrong? I get no response. Well, she wasn't really on vacation. I've been night. talking, trying to talk to her this whole process for months and months, and I've CC'd you guys on all of my communication there's no responses. I mean, I've gotten a few, but they're very minor things, not, you know, like I mean, like I said, I did say there are balance inconsistencies. I need help with this. But way back in, uh, let me find date. So in November, I had said to her, my final balance for what's in the capital, what I think should be in the capital plan does not match your balance what you say is in there somewhere my math is off can you help me figure out like can you look at my numbers where is my math off no response and that was back in november i started asking and saying my numbers aren't matching okay. and then of course last week i realized that the balance carryovers are also you know not consistent with what they should be based on and so that, so now what's published in the town report, what's in the capital plan doesn't match what's published in the capital fund status. So that's what the town's gonna see, is these inconsistencies. And then now I have found that there's numbers that are not even. Well, hopefully between now and March 4th, April 4th, we can get to the bottom of that. Yeah. Can I make a suggestion? Yes, sure. 
when we do the audit, mm -hmm. we can ask the auditors to hone in on a specific oh. area. And if we ask them to hone in on the capital plan, and I, I, I don't know who's right or who's wrong, I'm not making I don't know where the numbers right, got. But right, right size it, numbers. you know, go into the, go into the numbers, uh, instead of just a, 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 a picture in time, which is what an audit normally is, but have them do a deeper dive right. into the capital, and it may be an extra five hundred dollars to do it. Be worth it. And nothing's five hundred dollars anymore, but that's just <laughs> wishful thinking. <laughs> but it, that's what we. And again, I'm just using when the auditors come into where I work now. I say, can you hone in on this? I always, when it, when I was a town manager, said, look at the landfill because there was always a lot of cash going in and out of there. But they can hone in and do a, not a forensic audit, not that deep, but right. but uh, a more in-depth look at the capital, balances year to year, interest, income or loss, you know, all those types of things, and, and they can give you a report. And that would give, notwithstanding some of the frustrations I think everyone's having, that would give you a starting point for July 1, mm -hmm. or whenever the audit was concluded, for June 30th of this year, right. to move it forward. Yeah, I don't know where the errors are. I'm not a forensic accountant. Yeah. I mean, I do federal audits for a living, but yeah. um, I, you know, I, I'm not a forensic. Um, yeah, no, it's so just. Like a, I said, I went back four years yeah. and just used the information that was published in our, you know, in our stuff that's shared with the public, and it does not match yeah. with what one would expect yeah. it to look like. It could be typos, it could be. Just, sure, I don't know. Scrivener errors, but yeah, I, I don't know why. Yeah. But you know, at the end of the day, Tad, you could have just kept your mouth shut. We could have voted it through, and then it would have been wrong for five years in a row. Yeah. <laughs> My conscience. Well, well I, I think the point here is we want to get to a spot where everybody's in agreement as to what the numbers are. Right. The right. way to do that is have the auditors come in and say, "Here are your numbers," and that's where you start going into FY twenty-five. Shelly, does this have to do with the Edward Jones situation? Mm -hmm. that we no. That? no, this has nothing to do with like interest and gains. Like yeah. that this is, is a definite. Actual... This is like okay. we said, um, so just the fire department roof, for example. Like it says that we put in 40, $4,220 a year appropriated. And so this is, so we started with. Um, you know, we started with 25,340. We add 4,200, whatever, to it. So the next year, the balance should have been 29, whatever. Change, right. 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 But then, like I said, it was reflected as both 29 and 19. So then the next year, right. But then the next year, it didn't get fixed. I think there's some copy and pasting going on as well, it seemed like. The next year, then the balance was showing only as 23.7. Also, a couple of years where the town report came, or the that came out after the town report was printed. And I, town meetings. I so, pulled out. Okay. I have all of the Just supplements sure. and all of my town reports, and I pulled out okay. all of the. Just sure. Yeah, because yeah. I was like, yeah, I know that some things were changed, so I did pull out like the supplements and things, and yeah, and so you know, each year we were supposed to have added the four thousand, and then you know it should have gone up. But somehow it went down to 23. I have that it should be 33780 as of this June, based on the money that we should have been adding in over the last four years. If we assume that in 2020 the balance of 25340 was accurate. Okay, thank you very much. And so, your yeah. committee for all your hard work. Yeah, this is going to, it, it, it's been it's hard. Working. Progress. It's been hard, but you've done a fantastic between job. Between now and March 4th, I do have to present this to the town. So we have to figure out when that's going to happen and how we're going to do that. So, okay. okay. Uh, Excellent. And I have to give them, I think, at least 48 hours notice for that meeting, or is it more than that? Because it's a special meeting. Special meeting. I think it's 48. Check with the town. Yeah, it wouldn't be a, it's just a meeting. It, it, but okay, so, it, yeah. so whatever, I have to give a, enough time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whatever that is. Yeah, Tim two is days. Yeah. Two days. Yeah. 
Tell me. Tell me. But before March 4th, they do have to present it to you know, let people come. Everybody meet at the school. <laughs> anyway, so so uh, it's uh, disheartening that you know this stuff isn't accurate as both the capital plan chair and also as a taxpayer. Like, you know, I, I don't know where the money is yes. or how it's being you know credited or if it's being credited properly in the right places. Thank you. So, and I did resend copies tonight of everything that Shelly yeah. and I reviewed, okay. and I fixed the the zeros that. <laughs> I had misplaced and stuff so you can see and you can see the the corrections worksheet it's in there so you can see where I said here's what was published here's what and here's what I think the balance should be okay. so thank you we do need to ratify the capital plan approval um. Do we have a motion or do you want to hold to the next meeting? Hold the next meeting. Okay, we'll hold it till that's the next meeting. I had so many things here that I don't even know which is the one that I need to report. I'm just concerned, and this has nothing to do with the work of the capital plan. Uh, my, my concern is 456, 55,000. Nine hundred and seven dollars and sixty-one cents. I don't know how we can fund that on taxes. I just don't know how we can do that. Okay, town van. I was asked to put it on the agenda for discussion. Gloria, do you know what that's about? Town van. Town van. I saw it, so I'm here. But. Um, that's why we have a final price with the trade. Do we have that? I gave it at the last meeting. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, go into my last meeting then. Yeah, I don't think we have any additional information no, that we had at that previous right. meeting. So it's just a matter of deciding if you know we fund it a different way or if we wait a couple of years till. I mean, I put it in to get fully funded by 2026 if we decide to go that route. But I know you guys thought there might be other options you're helping uh, to pay that difference. Just for the purposes of discussion, I will move that we fund the balance that's necessary to get the van in this upcoming fiscal year by using ARPA money, and I don't know what that number is. Is there a second? It's not a lot, but it's... I can tell you the numbers that we have. All right. So the... The, the highest estimate that we got, because that's the one I put in here, yep. is 138,383. That was the highest of the, I think we got two estimates, final estimate, and that was the highest one. Um, according to what I think should be in the capital plan for it is 90,000. Cindy has it noted as 100,000, so I don't know how much, you know, that's one of the ones that there's a discrepancy in. And this is with the, uh, that, that uh, handicap, Correct. This is with okay. the handicap, the, yeah. the straps for the right. part or the, the so preschool. Kids, yeah. Um, yeah, so this is the newest estimate that has all the things that we think right. we need, and this is the highest of the two. So let me change my motion. Go for it, no one second it. All right. All right. Um, I move that we appropriate $138,383, of which nine uh, up to forty eight thousand dollars can be utilized out of arpa to make the difference between the ninety thousand dollars that shows in the plan and the balance due okay. is there a second i am not hearing a second I would amend it just saying more. If you're saying only the 48, I see $383 sitting here floating, so I don't think the 48 would cover it. 48383. That's oh, a friendly actually, amendment. Just because I'm ignorant, I don't know nothing. Um, the ARPA money, uh, I understand like it was used for the brush truck, it was used to supplement what we didn't have for the brush truck. But I know that there's a lot of people in town that are already 
trying to figure out how we ended up with a new brush truck when nobody voted on it. And I know the money was in the capital plan, ARPA money made up the difference, but I feel like if we keep going with this ARPA money thing and keep buying new things with it, there's gonna start in, like people in town are gonna start to get really upset when new things are showing up, regardless of where the money came from. Even if I donated the 48 grand, like it, it just so- I haven't heard one person come to a meeting and express any of those thoughts. Mm -hmm. I got a feeling that it's all coming to town meeting. Which, which is fine, like I, it is what it is, but. The ARPA money is to be, we had sessions, we talked to people, we made a list. The ARPA money is to be apportioned by the chief executive officers of the town, which are the select board. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to go through town meetings. No, I know, it's just, we keep. But what we're doing is we're helping the, ca the tax base by not utilizing tax, Local taxpayer money. It's all taxpayer money when, it, when it's all said and done. ARPA money. All it's all, but not using the local tax base and using this windfall uh, to perhaps get things a a little bit earlier and b take some of the burden off of the local tax rate. And that's 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 all this is doing. Because if we add, wait till twenty six, the price of that van is going to be one hundred and fifty four thousand dollars, and we're only putting X amount aside. We're always going to be behind the game. Th this so, way, so just for me, uh, I'm I'm just talking. Yeah. Just asking. Um, I know that it seems like the last few years at town meeting, or at least a couple of years ago, especially when the police department was going out, which more than a couple, but you know the the town van comes up a lot on whether or not we're going to keep the town van, whether or not we ought to have it, whether or not we ought to contract it out, and <clears throat> even spending out the ninety grand and making up the difference with the ARPA money. What happens in you know? 15 years when you need another one? Well, I, I don't know if it's going to make it 15 because every time we buy a van, it seems to last about half as long as it did before, which goes with pretty much any equipment you buy nowadays. Yeah. So, I mean, it, the townspeople have voted the capital plan every year, so they know that that van's in there. This is a surprise. Then, well, I, like I said earlier, we're, we're voting on a capital plan that the numbers never correct on either. Nobody ever talks good. about it. That's Nobody ever gets into the, into the, okay, well, is this really, you know, the checks and balances aren't really there. Are we, what are we voting on? We don't know, we just vote on everything. We say yes. Okay, and that, that's just my, that's my justification of why we should do it. Okay. And I'm not saying we shouldn't buy the van, I was just asking, I feel yeah. like it ought to be, somebody somewhere needs to say it out loud because every, well, a I lot think of that's other people are thinking it, so why not just say it, yeah. get it out there. Okay, Linda? Okay. Uh, first of all, I wanna thank Shelly for picking up the work on the town van that I was not able to do. I, I started to do it and then I wasn't able to. And I wanna thank her publicly for doing that. That's why you have the information that you have. So I thanked her privately, but I wanna thank her publicly. Thank you. And second of all, uh, the reason that Gloria and I are here is if somebody wants to know why the town van is there, we're happy to answer. It's not just used to go for a trip to here, there, or whatever. It does do that. But for a lot of seniors who live in this town, they live alone. I never lived alone. I had my husband for 55 years. He died. Two years later, I joined the Vernon Seniors because it's lonely at home. And it, it's, they're not my best friends. I don't have coffee with them, but it's a place I can go and associate with people. They can get to know me, I can get to know them. And that's part of the mental health for seniors. It's great, and I know that the school hasn't used it, but with these new seats that are in it, they will be able to use it, and they weren't. They were using it before, but they're not using it because of COVID. And the orchards were closed this uh, spring, uh, fall, uh, but they will be using it, and it can be used for other things than it's being used for. So it's not a frivolous item. Well, I do have a question then. Yeah. Well. No, go right ahead. That's why we're here. When. 
we asked to use it for the fire department when we had 13 people going to fire one up in Dover. Mm -hmm. David Walker said that we could not use it for that because we didn't have anybody licensed or weren't on the insurance. I'm sorry, it wasn't that we weren't licensed because my brother was licensed for it. And said he, we weren't on the insurance, yada, yada, yada. How are we? How was he not on the insurance when he's insured by the town to drive a fire truck, but he can't use the town bus? I have no idea. I, I can't answer. We don't, I know. I'm just saying. Like we, we say that, yeah, that it can be used for other bus. things, but at the same time, we're getting told that it can't be used for other yeah. things. Yeah. We can't. We can't. We don't control anything about no, that. No, David Walker That's, does. But the oh. thing is, <laughs> what I understood, what I understood, and this is what I understood, because it's in, and I was told that by Rita, who's driven the bus the longest. It is a municipal van, so it can only be used for municipal things. So I would fire have thought the municipal. fire department would have been yeah. a municipal thing. Yeah. The fire but, department used to use it. But I don't know why that no, happened. Like it has yeah, nothing to do with us. What was losing it was on at like 86. I'm sorry, one more. It's the big reason for getting rid of the CDL van, so right. anybody can. Which I get, but still, who at the end of the day is in charge of saying yes or no, it can or can't be used for? They usually can came before the board. Yeah. I don't know. I know that me and Todd came in and we tried to use it for, and Mike Pratt tried to use it for going back and forth because we were taking six different vehicles in the middle yeah. of snowstorms or whatever up to go do our fire training and Next it would have been nice to use the town bus yeah. that the taxpayers paid for. Sure. The, the other thing that VN does, although we don't have <coughs> the situation happening here very often, if there is a problem at Vernon Green, if there is a, right. an evacuation order, right. yes. that is one more exactly. piece of equipment that we have to move people if we need to. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that that's one of the things we ought to look at when we look at buying a you know, what's the multi-purpose? This is multi-purpose, but it can also be used in case of an emergency if we have to move 14 people or 12 people. You know, we can, that's one more piece. The, the school department may send buses too, but this is one more piece, especially for those that are infirmed that are gonna have issues getting in and out. Linda, did you have? Uh, one other thing, um, it was suggested by both of the people that made the bids that you have certain people that drive that bus that you don't have because I have a driver's license that I can technically drive the bus. I should not be driving the bus. It should be certain designated people and they should have insurance through the town in case something happens. And so we should make rules Who's driving the bus? What qualifications do they have to have? I know when I worked for Sir Sosmo, there were very strict rules about who we could hire and what they had to do to be a truck driver. And it should be the same thing for this bus driver. And I think that is something that should happen. Let's change the options of the word bus to throw in a van now. Van, right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Big difference. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yes, Gloria. I, I would like to say that I don't think people who aren't seniors can always appreciate how much this is needed. You know, when you're out working, you have such a social network. Even if you're in a job that you hate, you're part of the world, you're part of things that are going on. And we have two meetings in this building a month, but that's a lot of people. When you go on the trips, you never know what the mix is going to be. You meet different people. We sit at the table, have lunch together. People get to know other people. And you get to more and more of that. And I can tell you that people, um, they, they give a little more of who they are when they're in the smaller groups. And there are people who have needs that come out when we're at the lunches and we're at places. There have been people who have said, well, I can't do this anymore and someone will say well hey I do this I can help you I can't tell you how many times these kinds of things happen and people as they get to know one another and next time it might be another group but maybe you see some of these people and you see them when they come back into a meeting here and they're connecting with more people more people that they can call more people that they get to know and so I it's this is just so so important thank you very much
how uh, in the, so in the past year how often has that been gone out gone into service and in the next year how, how you know how often do you see that happening I want for trips yeah or for you know just it, it, the it, it varies it varies you know um, I have a number on it's that. supposed to do yeah, we, right we, we did have the, a number the capital plan actually looked at that to kind of see an average so an, an average looking at their calendar about uh, they're scheduled about eight times a month on average now that doesn't mean every month looks the same but when I did it when we did all the numbers and looked at a couple years in their calendars it's about eight times a month so twice a week roughly so that bus is going out twice a week yeah. it may not always go out twice like a week but that three was times sort of in one week right, right. right. so that's sort of the average that we came up with it depends um, on things that are happening and some and trips get canceled too and some so. of the trips are to here some of the well <laughs> yeah. 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 some of the trips are to here some of the trips are just to Brad Price Chopper, Chopper or whatever. Yeah, yeah. we do a so couple I of thought Dave Walker told me that bus left has left like four times in the past year. Is that not correct information? That's, that's not, not that correct. Is not no, that's correct. Right. I can tell you, I've seen over 30 more than that. And during COVID, like, it didn't go out as much, okay? Right. The, the, yeah. the, yeah. The, it didn't go out at all. The big right. thing right. that I noticed when we were talking about it, as far as the capital plan goes, is that it seemed like, you know, because they buy tickets. Yes. Sometimes. No, the bus had, no, 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 not sometimes for the tickets. Oh. Sometimes they'll have three people that end up going on the bus. Sometimes no. they'll have no, the bus No, you have five. five. Oh, sorry, five. Sorry, five. the minimum is five. So they have the minimum of five more often than not. And then other times, they'll, you know, it may be packed. It may be right. three quarters. But it varies. Five is yeah. also the, I, I, we could probably make six the average if you're going to average it out as far as riders. And how often is a bus driver an issue Never we have yet. a regular bus driver, and only we, one. we have Rita who's now back up, but, um, we need another one. but we, we need, an, we need another we one. We need somebody sure. else. Yeah. Right now the bus driver has to have a CDL, which is part of the problem. Yeah. yeah I They'll and probably they have more us. bus drivers once they have a bit the van. And with the wheelchairs, I'm guessing there'll be more usage too. Mm -hmm. I wish that Rita was here because I spoke with her personally and she had a much different opinion about whether the the bus ought to go to wheelchair accessible or not and her issue with it was she is an older lady and i'm, I'm speaking for she her and we can figure it out but she well but you, that's what you have mm -hmm. so you have an older bus driver and her issue with the wheelchair accessible bus was that now you have two people in wheelchairs and the bus driver is responsible for them and she would she knows that she would no longer be able to be the bus driver or be able to go on the trips if people with wheelchairs were coming because she personally could not physically handle putting the people on and off the bus, the van. Sorry. So have we looked into like contracting this out to something like, you know, Thomas Transportation or something like that, seeing what that would the cost? The capital because... plan looked at the what it cost a year for the van, yeah. and we probably can't contract it out for that much because really, um, I mean, this year we have budgeted 24000 for the van only because we were looking at buying a new van. But generally, it's only about ten thousand a year in the capital plan, and the van budget is only like fifteen thousand. So we're not going to get someone to take them out. You know, we're not. I don't think that contracting that out because the capital plan looked at that too to go is this, you know, even now the something. Van, the van budget is that insurance, fuel, yes. driver, right. you know, everything. Yes. Yes. fifteen grand is the. It was something like between 12 and 15, I think, last year. So when you say that plus 10,000 in the capital plan, we're only talking twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars a year. We're not contracting someone to take that van out twice a week for thirty thousand bucks. Right. You know, we're not going to be able to do that. Yeah, that's right. So we had looked at that as a capital plan to see was that a cost-saving option, and it really makes more sense to. The town to have a bus. Van. 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 Yes. Yes. Our van for forty plus grand of it. Anyway, I, <laughs> I've been going to meetings on Saturdays with Sarah Coffee, and she's part of the transportation committee. And um, there were a couple of times when issues came up as to why Vernon doesn't have the mover or some of the bus services actually come to town to provide trips to Brattleboro. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, you guys don't get separate trips with the van. Obviously, that's a real perk. 
<laughs> but what about just having someone, uh, you know, a bus on a local, you know, schedule you come to Vernon? Okay. And has anybody thought about that? So, I know a young man who's been trying to get the mover down here for several years um, to get to work uh, for work purposes as well as pleasure purposes. It up until a couple of years ago, um, up until really COVID and, and all this money that was being printed, um, it didn't. They lose money. The bus companies, public bus companies like the mover, lose money on every ride. The, 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 you know, if you pay a dollar or two dollars to, to take your ride, you, they're losing money, and it's supplemented generally by the federal and state government. Now they're supplementing it more so. A lot of places are not having any fees at all. Now is a good time to talk to the mover about putting a fixed route down here two or three times a week. It's not going to be a daily thing, no. and it won't match up with the senior's calendar. But the other thing is, so there, that would be something to talk to uh, the senator and, and the state rep about. There's no reason that the mover out of BF or Wilmington, whichever... I'm going to go to the meeting from. one Saturday, and I'll bring it up to yeah. it again. I see the mover in town every morning picking somebody up. It's that's but it's that's a demand response. Right. Yeah, that that's a demand response. Like, it's, you it's can call. Yeah, it's somebody else. It's somebody who's disabled that has right. a. You're you right. Just say, yeah, the van comes up every say. single morning. Yeah. Right. But I didn't know if it's the same there that drove it. Oh, it's a little lighting. Yeah, and the other thing though that is very seldom thought of is if. There is room on a public transit vehicle that is going in for demand response, as an example. I don't know the person, and there may be something specific with the person who's using it every day. If there is room on the bus or the van, and somebody wants to go into town who's not a senior or disabled, they have to be picked up and taken if there is room because, because it's, the fed, it's federal funded. Right. But this van can be used for this, can be used for emergency, can be, should be used for fire if they're going to training, or if the select board or others are going to the town fair. Yeah, they also took it to legislation. Yeah. It's yeah. been used a lot. The rec could actually use it for trips now. To right. CDL yeah. Year. Ooh. Six flags. Okay, thank you very much. So um, we still have a motion on the floor? You didn't get a second. How sad that is. I know. Okay. So is it dead now? It's dead. You'll bring it back up, don't worry. This is my no. Okay, um, the Planning Commission needs to meet with us. It needs to be an executive session for, um, okay, number one. Oh, okay. Madam Chair, I move that we enter an executive session with members of the Planning Board and the Town Administrator. And Maddie Arms. And Maddie Arms. Uh, relating to the negotiating or secure real estate purchase or lease options. Yeah, thanks to all the people. Is there a second? second? Pleasure seeing everybody. Me too. Thank, Thank you, Jesse. Thanks, thanks Jesse. Michael. Aye. 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 Thirty-nine. They came out at eight seven fifty-two. No action is taken. Um, I believe you have a. Yeah, M Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, I have very much enjoyed my two years here on the board, uh, being the skunk at the garden party most weeks. Um, but I have been offered a new position um, that. I did not have the offer until after the papers were due to be submitted. 
Um, I have accepted that offer and I am unable to fulfill uh, the role as a select board member moving forward. So um, if I'm, I can't withdraw because the name's on the ballot, but if I am elected, I will not serve. I am not able to serve at this point in time. I will be, I will miss your next meeting, but I will be at the um, meeting on Monday the 4th for the town meeting. Town meeting. You will be sadly missed, believe it or not. I do not believe it. But <laughs> yes, you will be missed. You will. I, um, I can do some, everything some, you've done. Thank you all very much. I, I can do some special projects if there's something that you want to, you know, but I can't. We got commit a spot on the planning commission. I don't, uh, uh, if you're going to let me chime in from uh, the end of the earth, then I, then I will do that. But I'm literally going to be at the end of the earth. Thank, thank you. you. And I thank, thank the board for their good help. Mm -hmm. yes, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. If there's nothing more to come before this, I'll actually motion to adjourn. So, so moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Brandon. Aye. Tom. Aye. Jean. Aye. We are adjourned.